So in relation to accepting other currencies in addition to USD, um, our plan is to add additional currencies that become uh, native on the blockchain, which means you'll be able to pay uh, for fees with those currencies as well. Um, the way this, is, this will work is we'll add partnerships with uh, institutions and monetary institutions uh, a little bit all around the world, uh, not just in Europe and in the UK, but also particularly in emerging markets. Um, typically, the way this will work is that in order to onboard funds, you'll send those funds into a bank account. Those funds get represented on chain and get transferred to your address, as, as is the case with dollars. And then you're able to freely transact those, those uh, currencies on chain. Uh, part of the plan is also to allow for uh, a DEX Forex, meaning that you'll be able to, to trade currencies on chain. Uh, while those currencies are actually sitting in custodial partners all around the world. So yes, uh, you can build a remittance company on top of public mint, particularly once we have support for uh, other currencies. Um, the way it would work is obviously uh, public mint would create the ability, would offer the ability to uh, onboard those funds onto a blockchain uh, infrastructure. Uh, and then people would be able to receive those funds and withdraw to their local banking system. Uh, but in addition to that, you can also, for instance, people can also accumulate those funds uh, onto their own uh, blockchain address so that when they do choose to withdraw, they pay a single wire transaction out or a single exit fee. Uh, other things you can build on Public Mint include uh, exchanges, uh, payment systems, um, and, that, and any, essentially anything that has to do with moving money around uh, in a high-speed, low-friction, low low-cost manner such that you're not really moving those funds at the level of the banking system, you're just moving those funds on top of the banking system. So, reality is that uh, the network as it is today uh, is already capable of, of dealing with a large number of transactions. Currently, our blockchain can support around 50 times more transactions than the, the Ethereum blockchain can support. So, we, we believe we do have you know, runway for a couple of years as we scale. Uh, but in addition to that, as blockchain technology evolves, we'll continue to incorporate those evolutions into our own blockchain. Uh, we expect that uh, that activity and that ongoing effort of staying up to date will continue to allow us to process a high number of transactions and stay well ahead of the curve in terms of, of usability. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there's other elements of, the, of our system that require scalability. So for instance, serving up the, the web uh, UI uh, is easy to do because it's, it's static. Uh, right now, you can only operate it through our through our website, but in the future, you'll be able to download it and run it yourself. Uh, the mobile application also scales well because it's distributed via um, via via the online stores. So we really don't foresee a problem in scaling up because we'll continue to stay uh, working and stay focused on making sure that the blockchain and our whole infrastructure is capable of dealing with around ten times more. Uh, activity than the existing activity today. So we, our plan is just stay ahead of the curve, continue to monitor the system and continue to, to evolve it. In terms of the funds becoming available on the blockchain, uh, that will depend on the, on the transfer in method. Uh, in the case of white transfers, uh, funds become available as soon as our, our partner banks um, confirm to us that the funds have been received on the account. There are other mechanisms that are slower. Uh, for instance, credit cards require a settlement period, uh, so does ACH. And then uh, all around the world, every payment method is, is different. Uh, so for instance, in Europe, there, there are banks that accept transactions and they are essentially processed immediately which means that we would be able to process those transactions very quickly, uh, but all around the world is different. The, the bottom line is, as soon as we can make sure that the funds have been received, 
we can make those funds available on chain in order to be transacted on chain immediately and, and with, with high speed. Decentralization is, uh, is an important aspect of, of public mint. Um, we understand that on one hand, uh, we'll always have to have some centralized components uh, to the extent that if you're dealing with uh, regulated entities and you are required to implement a compliance program, there always needs to be an entity that takes on that responsibility in order to maintain this connection with the, with the legacy uh, aspects of the, of the financial ecosystem. Uh, so we're, we take on that role and that portion is centralized and then we become a bridge into a decentralized world where once you have your funds on chain, you can transact easily and directly in peer to peer with any other entity on the system. Uh, and then once you want to exit that into uh, the traditional banking system again, you also have to go again through a centralized entity that maintains that connection. So I wouldn't say that we're centralized or decentralized. When you're having this conversation, you really need to look at it from as a spectrum across various uh, variables. Um, what I can say is this, our focus is to be as decentralized as possible because we believe that decentralization serves a function not just for, for the users of Public Mint, but also for ourselves in that it takes away some liabilities and by taking away liabilities, it means that there's fewer things that can be compromised if we can hand over those uh, decisions to, to, to a collective. Uh, one good example of that is uh, the Mint token, which is, was created and in, in designed in order to take away control of the, the decision making around the EARN pro, pro, program, uh, to take away that, that control from uh, depending on public mint and pass it on to depend on a community of people that are involved and that together can lead to better decisions than a centralized entity can do. So that is just one example of our commitment to decentralization because we believe that when decentralization is brought into the picture in order to solve a problem, it is a better ethos, it is a better mindset that just to pursue decentralization for the sake of decentralization. So we believe that centralization is necessary when it's necessary and decentralization is necessary when it actually solves something. And we'll always take this pragmatic approach of using what's best in the in this case rather than trying to run a one-size-fits-all approach. When you wire fiat to public mint, what happens is you're asking your bank to send those funds into a custodial partner of public mint. Once those funds are received by our custodial partner, they are distributed to a number of other fiat institutions so that the funds don't remain in a single uh, bank account. Uh, but at that point, public mint is notified of the reception of funds and you, those funds are delivered in token format on chain so that you can now transact uh, on chain. Um, you can do a number of things with those funds. You can send them to anyone else on, on chain. You can use them on the EARN program, or you can uh, use them on any application that has implemented uh, accepting uh, fiat funds on public mint. The difference between public mint and public mint earn is that public mint is a foundation that includes the custody structure, the blockchain, and the number of connections to various payment systems, the web widget, uh, the mobile app, and essentially everything that provides uh, the foundation for other applications to be built. Whereas public mint earn is an actual application on top of public mint that allows you to take funds that exist on Public Mint and distribute them to a series of partners in order to generate revenue, to generate yield. So one is the foundation uh, and the other one is just an application on top of it. The, I do understand that, for instance, on the mobile app, you see the Public Mint mobile app and everything is packaged as it is uh, a single thing, uh, but under the hood, they are kind of different things, one built on top of the other.
Regarding the utility of the Mint token, the main challenge we were faced with when building the, the EARN program was to find a way for decisions around the governance of the process to be made by a wider collection of, of individuals and entities. So we didn't want to be the entity responsible for folk, for selecting the, the CFI partners, for selecting the DeFi protocols, because we understood that decentralizing that, that decision-making uh, will lead to a more resilient and more um, effective uh, program. So we designed the Mint token in order to be at the center of the governance process. And this leads to what sets the Mint token apart from other tokens in that using the Mint token in order to participate in governance and staking the token in order to be able to vote means that you, you as a stakeholder get paid in fiat tokens. So we're not printing more Mint tokens in order to compensate uh, Mint stakeholders. We are using revenue from the actual financial activity around the EARN program to compensate uh, main stakeholders. And that, I think, is something that sets it apart uh, because the higher the TVL we have on the platform, the higher the revenue for the same amount of main stakeholders. Insurance is a complex topic that is tightly associated with the concept of risk. And when thinking in terms of insurance, you have to try and understand not just what the outcome is, such as in loss of funds, but also what the trigger is. So as an example, uh, and we've mentioned this before in, in AMAs and elsewhere, uh, FDIC insurance is a form of insurance offered by the US government in order to protect uh, funds from the failure of um, collapse of the financial institutions that uh, hold those funds. But it's still not a blanket coverage against loss of funds, but it's primarily against institutional failure. Um, public Mint earned on its, on, the, on its end as its own form of insurance where a portion of the funds that are deposited rather than applying those funds on uh, partners that ger generate revenue we apply a portion of those funds on partners that provide insurance. For people in developing countries, Public Mint can become a window into a variety of services. So for instance, the, the sheer ability to load funds from your local currency and then convert them into dollars or euros or pounds or any other of the major currencies that Public Mint will uh, support that means that you can now execute the wealth preservation strategy. In addition to that, it also means that you can participate in, in much larger markets than before you weren't really able to. Um, but even at this most basic level, the ability to load funds and bring them on, on chain and then be able to send funds to anyone instantly 24 seven, that in itself, it's a feature that we may have grown accustomed to in, in the so-called more developed countries, but in, in developing countries, they're probably still, in many cases, underserved. So yeah, I think, I think Public Mint can become a very important aspect of financial freedom and financial democratization of services and products to emerging markets and to developing countries. To build on Public Mint, I would suggest you start by visiting developers.publicmint.com. That is essentially the, the core resource that you can take a look around to look at some tutorials, look at some examples, but it really depends on the kind of application that you're building. I would argue that if you know how to build for Ethereum, you can do exactly the same thing and use the exact same tools to build for the Public Mint blockchain. Um, but essentially any tool that you can use in order to interact with the blockchain or to build a UI you can use on, on Public Mint. To get some support for your development efforts, you can reach out to us over email at developers at publicmint.com or at publicmintdev on Telegram. See you there. And as for development in the next few weeks, uh, even though we've been tracking the roadmap pretty closely, 
our main focus is to launch the alpha version of our mobile app, which will initially open up in Android for a select group of people. Um, and then uh, after the summer, we will be launching the full mobile app and the earn program. That's the main focus we have right now, which is to get all, all of this in your hands so you guys can start using it, polish it, and then have a, a really well built and polished and reliable application by the end of Q3 2021.